Wow, you really do look stunning from up here. I'm going to ask a little question. It, it won't go beyond us, your answer, but how many of you secretly in the privacy of your own room or bathroom or shower or mine, maybe you talk to God at night? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There are a few people. I know it's embarrassing. I know, I know. Well, from Sojourner's point of view, we're Christians, working for social justice, been around for 40 years. We think talking to God is a really great idea. I don't know if any of you have seen a study, but sometimes reading the Bible makes you liberal. <laughs> when you start reading what Jesus said, it makes you radical. And one thing that we say as Sojourners is that religion should always be personal. You should always talk to God at night and listen. Listen deeply. But religion is not only personal. It is not only private. It must be political. It must have an outward expression or else it is a dead dogma. This past August, we were able to get more than 60 religious leaders arrested. Usually at Sojourners, we're like going to the churches and saying, do you think you have somebody who might want to risk arrest about this thing? Well, usually the answer is no. This summer, we had people coming to us. Where do I sign up? I want to get my pastor sitting down in front of the White House. He wants to get arrested. She wants to get arrested. Where do we sign? Where do we go? People are coming to us to ask how they can put their bodies on the line, how they can incarnate their faith on this issue. People want to know how to act. One of the things that we did yesterday with that same representatives of those same religious communities, because it's part of our tradition to engage the opponent. So we went to the State Department and we met with Dr. Jones and Dan Clune, who are the head of the bureau that are running these meetings. And we told them exactly what we think about the moral outrage that we have about the process that they're engaged in. We told them that building this pipeline and further development of the tar sands is religiously and morally reprehensible. We reminded them that there are ethical considerations that have to be taken into consideration and must be overtly taken into consideration. We told them that we trusted, since they were scientists, that if this decision about the pipeline was based solely on the best climate science, none of us would be having this conversation. And they agreed. So part of what I encourage them to say, or part of what I encourage with them is, you know, I said, most of the folks here that we're working with they were Obama supporters. They believe in what he put out as a vision. They want to defend him on climate policy. If he does the right thing and does not sign this permit, we will defend him on it. We will say Obama stood up to big oil. We will say that he is finally fulfilling his commitments from the UN speech. We will say that he is finally turning back the rising of the seas. We will defend him. And give him money and time. However, I said, and I want to make this very clear. However, if he does not, do the right thing. If he permits this pipeline to go through, there will be holy hell to pay. And the way that that's going to look, as I said, we told him we would much rather be defending him than organizing Lutheran bishops to sit down in front of bulldozers, but that is what we will do. Thank you all very much.